Let's take a walk around the new unified security portal. This really aggregates all those different signals from Microsoft Defender, things like Defender for Identity, Defender for Office, Defender for Endpoint, and Cloud App Security as well. Now let's pretend I'm a SOC analyst. The initial page that we get is this dashboard view. This is a snapshot view about what's happening in, inside my estate. I can move these cards around depending on what's of interest to me personally. So for example, we can see our security posture. We can see the devices that are at risk, the users that are at risk. We can also see things around threat analytics. So what are the uh, attacks and the campaigns that are happening throughout the world at the moment? And what's of those, what is affecting my environment? So let's head over to incidents and alerts. This is where I'm going to spend the majority of my time as a SOC analyst. Here I can see a timeline of events about what's going on within my environment. All of these correlated incidents, so multiple alerts, enable me to see an all-up view about what's going on and what things have a higher severity over others. I can also see, if I scroll down a little bit, is where those different alerts and the systems that they're coming from. So this very top one, for example, I can see this correlated of alerts is coming from Defender for Identity, Cloud App Security, Defender for Endpoint, and Office 365 as well. The drop down is showing me all of the different alerts associated with that incident. So for example, we can see this malware was prevented and these tags are basically telling me what group of machines or what type of kind of built-in tags are being used, whether it's VIP users or it's uh, going to be a country type of tag. And these are pre-canned tags that align closely to the MITRE attack frameworks, possible insider threats, whether me as a SOC analyst is told that to do a full remediation. So saying that those devices just can go away and go and auto remediate yourselves. If we click on the above arrow here on the incidents, we get this blade pop out. Again, this gives me a high level view about the types of categories, classification, the impacted entities within here, the users, the mailbox, and all the associated alerts for this incident as well. As a SOC analyst, I can also assign this particular incident to me if I want to. And what that means from this initial dash dashboard is I can go into filters, and then choose whether I want to see new or in progress alerts, whether I want to see all of the resolves, the impact with that, anything that's assigned specifically to me. And I can also choose the different sources, the different telemetry that's coming in from all of our different security products. Let's click on the incident to get more information about it. So again, I get a summary of this uh, alert, or all of these different incidents that make up the alerts. Here we can see how we align to the MITRE ATT&CK framework. So for example, we can see there's 103 out of 120 active alerts. We can see there's 11 attack tactics that's being used. So if this was saying one, for example, that might mean to me as a SOC analyst, you know, that's pre pretty, not, pretty much not as severe as uh, it could be, but 11 attack tactics means that something is going on in my environment that I need to go in and investigate further. If I scroll down slightly underneath the MITRE ATT&CK frameworks, I can see a timeline, the attack kill chain of exactly what are the alerts that make up this incident and why this is such a, a severe issue. And we'll go into that in a second. In this middle portion here, we can see the scope of this particular incident. What is being affected by this attack? So again, I can see 18 devices, 23 impacted users, and 12 impacted mailboxes. And again, I can see at the very top here, the severity level. So everything within the Microsoft tool set basically allows you to filter it on the most severe, the most risky activities with your environment. And then lastly, over on the right-hand side here, we can see incident information. So exactly what is the other incidents that are associated with this one? Again, correlating all those different tacks so I can streamline my process and my investigation around this. Here I can see the tag summary. So these are tags that I've created within my environment, or they are pre-built, so pre-canned tags that we talked about. We can also see the data sensitivity, and we can also see uh, more metadata around this particular incident. So let's go back down to this timeline of events down the bottom left here. So we can see exactly what's going on. If we click on view alerts, this actually takes us to the alerts tab.
So we can see here, we've got 120 different alerts associated with this incident. So for example, we can see there's a suspected uh, skeleton key attack. We can see uh, sensitive LDAPs being touched. We can see uh, some suspicious file that was detected as well from Defender for Office. And then we can also see malware was not zapped because zap was disabled. So this is zero hour auto purge. This means when we detect something within our platform, then we can automatically go into those specific mailboxes and actually delete that harmful email or those attachments out of everybody's mailbox if we detect that. And lastly, we can also see PowerShell is being run. So this is things like fileless attacks that are happening. There's a PowerShell command being run. If we click into that alert, again, we get more metadata about that specific uh, process that was being run. We can see the anti-malware service kicking in here. And we can also click on these uh, individual items here to get a preview about uh, what PowerShell was being run or what process was being run as well. So we can click on here. This is our Mimi Cats one. And uh, we can see more metadata about the user that was uh, being actually running this, uh, this, this command. And we can also see associated data then on the right hand side here. We can mark, if we look at the very top here, mark this as a true or a false. So using machine learning, we can teach the system about what is a real type of attack or what is a, a false positive. If we scroll down slightly, Microsoft provides an alert description and some recommended actions about what to do with this particular alert. So me as a SOC analyst, I can read up on these specific entries if I'm less familiar with those. We can also see the incidents are associated with this. We can also see more metadata about the file and the executables that have been running within this example and the affected devices and users. Here, I can also manage the alert as well. So I can give it a status. I can give it a classif classification and also I can add comments within here as well. At the very bottom here, you'll see this throughout this platform. So here I can consult a thread expert. This means that I can quickly send a message for a, an a, a attack or an alert or an incident I'm less familiar with. And our thread experts will actually help you uh, diagnose those problems and help you triage uh, those issues. If you cast your eye at the very top, we can also see the other metadata around the PC. So let's go into that PC. Again, we get this information blade over on the right-hand side. I can see a live response command has been actioned with this. Uh, Janet's PC has actually got severity of high. I can see associated tags within here again, and other traditional metadata around this particular device. If I open up the devices page, that takes me into more information about that spe specific PC. So there may be other alerts or other incidents that are associated with this. I could see at a, a dashboard level, you know, this device is, has a high severity list. list. I can also see four users are actually logging onto this device. Typical things I could use this dashboard for is to see a timeline of the different alerts are associated with this individual machine. So I can see a list down here. I can also see security recommendations. So for example, there may be third party applications that are installed on this device that have inherent risks with them. We also see a software inventory as well about all the different applications that are installed on this device. And we can also click on the discovered vulnerabilities, the whole list of associated CVEs, the severity and the related software to that issue. Let's head back to our incident for a second. What we're doing here is throughout the dashboard, I've shown you this main incident going through the alerts. I've shown you the devices page so we can see all of the devices that are associated with this incident. We can also go into the users as well. So we can see there's 23 users or uh, affected by this. Again, we can click into those items to get more information about that particular user and other devices that it might be uh, logging in with. So again, I can see a timeline of events of when this user is logging in. Uh, we can see there's a suspicious inbox forwarding. So those signals are coming from Microsoft Cloud App Security, again, being surfaced into this one dashboard. This is really powerful because me as a SOC analyst now, I have one view to be able to, to digest and understand all of those different signals and understand the attack kill chain, when that vulnerability came in, when that type of attack came in, and what was the end result.
This is where, if we go back to the incident, we can click on the Investigations tab here and see the status of each individual, all of the auto-investigation and remediation capabilities. So here we can see, for example, mail was uh, zapped. Let's click into that to get more information. Here we can see the investigation graph. So the way we read this is anti-clockwise. We can see the signal coming in for, from Defender for Office. We can see there's one correlated alert. And down here, we can see how the system was automatically understanding and kind of triaging that for us. So within this mailbox, we can see there's one malicious item and there was one malicious file that was scanned inside it. And then down the bottom here, we can see the evidence. So typically a SOC analyst is going to be writing this down in a notepad um, or OneNote to understand you know, what were the, the evidence capabilities that this uh, this attack derived from. So we can see there were seven entries found and we'll go into that in a second. And then we can also see that was uh, pending approval for soft deletion of those five email messages. So that's where the zap capabilities come in. Up on the left hand side here, we can also see how long this investigation has been running for. So if there's automatic remediation, then this could take uh, a number of minutes. If the machine goes offline, then the system will wait for that machine to come back online to carry on the remediation. As this is pending approval, uh, this is kind of take a little while, but you know, this is a, a demo environment within this to just give you an understanding about how it works. Again, if we go across to evidence, this is where we can see those uh, individual items that the system has found that contains that type of attack. And these are the items that are pending approval for that soft deletion. Lastly, in this page, if we go across to pending actions, we can click on these individual items, again, get more metadata about those specific bits, and we can also go and click on Go Hunt. And this takes us to our advanced hunting page. This is where now it'll automatically build the custom query language for us to go and uh, triage and find that data within the platform. So it's created that script for us. Uh, it's also run that as well, run that query so we can get more information around this. Typically in uh, organizations that don't have this today, they would go across into their SIEM solution and they would run advanced hunting queries within there. While we're in here, we can also identify uh, the schema. So we have built in different queries uh, and different uh, attributes that you can choose from. We also have a Microsoft curated platform on GitHub. So there's queries in there that you could reuse as well. So for example, if we go into queries and then the campaigns, maybe we're looking for this ATP baby shark. And here's the script that we could run to see whether items that uh, include the, the campaign of Baby Shark uh, is within our platform and whether there's any devices or users or mailboxes that are uh, associated with that type of campaign. And that's all well and good, but wouldn't it be good to see what's happening within the threat landscape and understand whether those items, those campaigns, those vulnerabilities, those threats uh, that are happening today in the world is my environment infected by that? So this is where we can go over to threat analytics. And here we can see all the latest threats, all the high impact threats that are coming from our threat experts. So we have a team of threat experts that understand the security landscape, understanding what campaigns are running right now, and then bring you this report into the platform. So for example, if we go into this lemon duck and lemon cat campaign, this will give us a dashboard about any associated instance within the platform that are affected by this. At the moment, we don't have anything for this, any affected devices, any mailboxes that are associated with this type of campaign. We can see here that we've got 21 misconfigured devices. So we could go into our mitigation details and again, see more information associated with that duck <laughs> or lemon duck and lemon cat campaign. We can also go into the analyst report. This gives you an executive summary and analysis and the CVEs associated with that. We can also scroll down and see the attack kill chain, exactly how uh, Lemon Duck actually goes through and works. So we can see end to end, how is the delivery happening? What's the execution? What's the impact of this particular attack and campaign? So our threat analytics spend a lot of time in building this information for your SOC teams. So basically you don't have to.
So this is really powerful stuff. You know, I can go into the other tabs here as well and see any related incidents, if we had any open, any impacted users by this particular campaign. As you can imagine, this is a huge dashboard, a huge platform to understand and learn. We've got Learning Hub as well, which we've kind of built into the platform to help you understand the different uh, attack frameworks, whether you're trying to correlate different incidents uh, and alerts with that, whether you're trying to learn advanced threat hunting. Uh, this is all in here to help you with that learning, understanding the platform and the different Microsoft Defender capabilities that you have at your disposal. Even if we need to evaluate the product before we even use it, then down under endpoints and evaluation tutorials, we actually give you different labs, different simulations that you can go away and run. Whether that's uh, just building like three different VMs within the platform for a space of uh, 72 hours to, to understand and run investigations, then we allow you to do that within the platform. If you want to create your own endpoints and then run simulated scripts on those, you can evaluate the product that way as well. And just to help you understand this portal for a second, this very top level up here is where we're going to spend most of our time. And that's correlating incidents from things like endpoints, so Defender for Endpoint, like Defender for Office, so our email and collaboration investigations. And also we get reports as well. This is really powerful because if we go into things like email and collaboration reports, if your business decision makers say, right, we bought this product, now we want to understand what's our return on investment with this. If we went into, for example, this report here, the mail flow status summary, not only does it show us you know, inbound and outbound how well our filtering is doing, but if we go into the funnel view here, this is where we can see a visualization about the edge protection capabilities from like Exchange Online Protection. And then down into more of the advanced capabilities with Defender for Office, and then showing you how much email is actually culling before it gets delivered to that end user. Defender for Office gives you advanced capabilities such as dynamic delivery of attachments and emails. So we can detonate risky attachments, understand where that's trying to go. We can do on point of click when people click a URL or a web address through Microsoft Teams or Word or uh, just an email. We can see where that link goes. If it goes to a known bad site, we actually give that user a block message saying, hey, this goes somewhere where you don't want to go. We're actually going to protect yourself from yourself here. So these are really great reports to kind of drill into. And if you're looking for a more kind of managed SOC or, or a partner to be able to provide that service, if we go across to partners and APIs, we can see all of the different partner applications that will hook into our APIs to give you that kind of end-to-end -end capability or managed SOC. Uh, so we can scroll down here into uh, different offerings within there. And then lastly, if we go across to our settings and device discovery, we've got some new capabilities where we can use the sensor that's built into Windows 10 to scan networks. So it's going to look at corporate devices, not like home devices like you know, my Google Nest or my TVs and things like that. It's going to scan for corporate based uh, devices that aren't uh, owned or managed by your platform. So we can bring up a report on all those unmanaged devices that may cause inherent risk.